What would slasher movies be without cool weapons, right? And weapons with dramatic effect, no less. Or perhaps just particularly squishy human bodies? Either way, let's look at some horror movie weapons and think about how practical they would be in real life without supernatural strength and all that. Now, this list would be different if the weapons functioned the exact same way as in the movies or granted you the powers associated with them. You know, Freddy's glove, tall man's spheres, pyramid heads, giant knife. We're going to be assuming a mundane setting without magic or supernatural stuff, and I'm excluding guns. Otherwise, I mean, come on. M41A pulse rifle from Aliens. How can you beat that? I mean, Predator shoulder cannon, maybe. Either way, and I'm also I'm going to be sticking to villains, so no flamethrower or buzzsaw or stake jackhammer. Sorry. I'm also assuming a skilled user, not just some random Joe Schmo who has no freaking clue how to use these. And it's sad that I have to say this, but disclaimer, this is just for entertainment. I'm not endorsing or glorifying violence in any way, okay? So let's get to it. But first, this video has the most fitting sponsor, Shudder. It's a video streaming service by AMC, specialized in all things spooky, creepy, and gory. Uh, you'll be able to try it for 30 days free with my code Scalagram on Shutter.com. Shutter is doing its annual 61 days of Halloween in September and October with a new season of the Creepshow reboot, new specials with Elvira and Joe Bob Briggs, and so much other stuff. They're going to make a killing if you know what I mean. Although it's a specialized platform, I like the variety within. You've got everything from nostalgic old classics to slasher flicks, to sci-fi horror, comedy and documentaries, just to name a few. One obscure title that really surprised me is Dave Made a Maze. It's one of the most original movies I've seen and a great example of how much you can do on a budget if you're creative enough with cutting edge cardboard technology. Ugh cardboard cuts. And there are also plenty of exclusives to choose from. So if you like horror and all its subgenres, go to Shutter.com and use the code Scalagram for a 30-day free trial. So at the bottom of the list, number 10, I put Frey Krueger's glove from the Nightmare on Elm Street series. If I was ranking by coolness, this could very well take the number one spot because it's one of the most interesting badass weapons. But in real life, without dream powers, I've talked about wrist-mounted blades and claws before. If you haven't seen that, click on the card in the upper right corner or go to the video description. Are you out of your cursed mind? Claws are brutal, natural weapons of primal mayhem. A tiger can play you to death by ripping out your entrails. Tigers have huge murder mittens with massive bones and stronger muscles and tendons than puny humans. Also, short, stout claws. Have you tried slapping a heavy bag with just your fingers instead of the palm? Hurts, doesn't it? The, the amount of power you can put into a strike is limited by the weakest link in the kinetic chain. With most weapons, that's the wrist. In this case, that's each individual finger. As terrible and cringeworthy as the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street reboot was, the glove is actually an improvement, practically speaking. It's got metal strips connecting each finger to a band at the wrist. So this way, it's actually a more solid structure and you could use it more effectively, theoretically. But either way, instead of slashing or stabbing with a single blade, you're spreading the power of the swing across four fingers. Not to mention it's got pitiful reach. I made this grid to visualize differences in reach next to no defense. At least it's got some limited finger protection. Although with a gauntlet, you could try to defend with the back of the hand. But in this case, you can't even close a fist. So th this would just not be very useful. Sorry, Freddy. If you still doubted, uh, Zombie Go Boom has tested the glove and it sucks. You just cannot do a lot of damage with it, neither with a slash nor trying to penetrate with it. And uh, well, on the upside, it's fast. You can't beat it because it's, it's the speed of your hand, basically, of your arm. And um, it would be effective in grappling. You know, if somebody tried to wrench the weapon from you, it would be pretty difficult because it's 
kind of attached to your hand and you could use it in all kinds of positions and it's pretty easy to carry. I mean, if you didn't want to wear it because you want to be able to close your hand and, and hold on to things better, it would be somewhat awkward. You'd have to kind of cram it into a pocket or, or let it dangle from a belt, but it's pretty good overall in that regard. Here's an example of a similarly short but much more useful weapon, the deer horn knife. This is a synthetic practice version. This also doesn't give you much more reach than your empty hand, but so many more options. You can block, control, hook, slash, stab, punch, all kinds of things. And it protects your hand a little better. So that's more useful, and what's also more useful than Freddy's blade glove is the next weapon. Well, if it's so bad, how you like this? The hook. You see this in Candyman and I Know What You Did Last Summer. It looks intimidating. How good would it be? Well, it's usually either a meat hook or a pulp or log hook. The meat hook has a problem that it's usually got a round handle, which means that it shifts on impact. When it does, it comes back and pushes into the web of your hand, which I'd imagine is kind of painful and also limits the effectiveness of the swing. So if it's not a solid structure, if it keeps shifting around, you cannot deliver as much momentum to the target. And um, there are probably some ways to work around it and make it more useful. But either way, there are limited ways of attacking. Like, what are you going to do with it? Like, you can't really strike with it too well. It's basically just the hook end. And because of how strongly curved it is, it limits what angles you can use. The good thing is you can hook with it. It is a hook after all. So you can control the opponent's weapon or limbs or things like that. Now, in terms of defense, now a thick steel hook could be quite good. A log hook is nice and solid, but often shaped with an awkward angle. You know, awkward for fighting as opposed to its intended purpose, of course. Because it rotates, it's not that strong, you know, at least for a static block. And the wrist is somewhat weaker in this direction compared to that. Speed depends on the weight of that particular hook. Overall, quite good, I would say. Reach is a lot better than empty-handed, but not amazing. As far as ease of carry is concerned, the issue here is the handle position. Now, because the handle is perpendicular, it would be a little bit awkward to wear. It would stick out in uncomfortable ways. Yeah, pretty sure I can get you hooked on this weapon concept. All right, so on to the knife. As seen iconically in Psycho, Child's Play, Halloween, etc. Uh, Michael Myers tends to use a chef's knife. I just talked about how Michael Myers holds the knife and how that does or doesn't make sense. And then I realized that this could be misconstrued as teaching would-be murderers how to be more deadly. So I think I'm just going to put this in a supporter exclusive bonus cut of this video, which will be on Patreon and uh, YouTube members and such. Sorry about that, but you know how it is, especially on YouTube. Anyway, so the effectiveness, of course, depends on the type of knife. You know, Ghostface in Scream, for example, is using a small hunting buoy. And, um, you know, if you, if you use a large knife, it's going to be more effective than a smaller one. Obviously, if it has a guard, it's going to be more useful, etc., etc. Um, in terms of damage potential, so to speak, if used by a huge, strong guy, like this dude right here, it's devastating. Of course, Zombie Go Boom has tested it as well. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, almost none. In a knife fight, there are really no parries. This is too short and quick, really. So you have to do it through maneuvering, through controlling the opponent's arm, things like that. And by the way, it's highly, highly dangerous. Long daggers, as you see in medieval fighting manuscripts, can be used for parries and, and hooking and all that. This, you're not so much. The emergency solution basically would be if you had to defend yourself against a longer weapon, could be maybe to put the blade flat against your forearm and, and try to block this way. Seems pretty risky because if you 
misjudge and you know it connects here rather than there or on your elbow you're in a world of hurt of course in terms of speed you can't beat it it's as fast as you can move your arm and you can change direction very quickly it's as I said extremely dangerous to face at that distance so uh, reach depends on how you hold it you know ice pick grip is basically barely better than empty hand and uh, the saber grip of the blade forward has significantly more reach than the ice pick grip with the blade down so i'm just going to go by the maximum you've got so it's better than empty hand it's not great obviously in a grappling situation it's extremely dangerous because of how short and fast it is for ease of carry of course it gets a perfect score it's small, light, can easily be carried and even concealed in all kinds of ways. So, no problem there. Huh? You forgot one. You can throw it. Sure, discard your only weapon. Smart. Oh, God. <sighs> Move along, go bleed somewhere else. We gotta get on with this. Matt Cordell's nightstick from Maniac Cop. I wanted to stick to the most common iconic weapons, but how could I skip this one? I mean, it's a nightstick or baton or billy club, whatever you want to call it, with a hidden blade. It's got a fairly narrow blade, so it would be good for cut and thrust, uh, although limited power in the cut compared to some other weapons. And uh, it can also be used as a blunt impact tool, so for versatility, that's great and uh, you know, could do quite a bit of damage with it, obviously. As far as defense is concerned, you've got more to work with than the knife, of course. You simply more steel and also more mass to displace attacks. Hand is still vulnerable, of course, just like with the previous weapons. And um, speed, it's larger and heavier than the knife, obviously, so not quite as fast, although the thrust is going to be pretty close. For grappling, it's decent. You know, it's not quite as good as the knife due to the length. You know, a lot of things that apply to the knife also apply here, except that it's just larger overall. As a baton, it would not be great because somebody can easily grapple with this because they can actually hold on to the stick as opposed to a sharp blade. Of course, it's very easy to wear on the belt. It's compact. It basically comes with its own scabbard. So, huh? I got another negative. Makes it hard to decide whether I want to stab or bludgeon you to death. So, on to the sickle. As seen in Curtain and Children of the Corn, like the hook, but better in every way, essentially. Now, for grass cutting and weed harvesting, you often have a thin, light blade, but there are some that look quite sturdy indeed and would definitely work in combat. Uh, if you want to count brush sickles, and now we're talking, those are sturdy and powerful, would be very effective. Unlike the meat hook, the blade is correctly aligned with the forearm, which makes for very powerful attacks, can be used as an improvised war pick, especially, of course, the Japanese version, the Kama, uh, is definitely an effective war pick. I've tested and reviewed this one, again, uh, video up there. Striking with a point, especially on a design like this, is brutally effective. And then you've also got the edge, of course. It's highly versatile overall. Uh, you can hack, slice, cleave, rake, hook, control, you know, parry, all kinds of things. And uh, it's very fast in terms of speed. Again, pretty close to the you know, speed of your arm. It adds a little bit of weight depending on the particular sickle, but works quite well overall. For grappling, it's great. You know, good old Meyer shows us a number of fighting techniques. There's so many ways to use this, so really quite good. Carry, well, it's less awkward than a hook because it's all aligned in one plane as opposed to having a perpendicular handle, uh, so it's flush against your body. Uh, it's of course more cumbersome than a knife and a stick blade. I've got something even better. Hammer and sickle. No. No? What do you mean no? No politics on this channel. 